Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about something that I think is really, really interesting. A piece of software that has saved my lowly 4 gig RAM Surface Go 3 from being relegated to sitting on a shelf and has now placed it firmly into the list of devices that I am probably going to continue using every single day. What is this magical piece of software? Well, Windows purists avert your eyes because we're talking about something called FIDOS. This is their website, and it's a bit strange, but it's meant to kind of look like your operating system. What is FIDOS? Well, this company has taken Google's Chrome OS and effectively repackaged it in a few different ways, and they are now selling it to people <laughs> to be installed on other devices. Why would I choose to use this over something like Chrome OS Flex? Well, because this has access to the Google Play Store, interestingly enough. And not only that, but they actually have customized several builds of FIDOS specifically for other devices, like if you go to FIDOS for you, different Surface devices, like my Surface Go 3. They have made builds for all of these devices. How cool is that? Otherwise, of course, you can just install it for a regular computer and do that as well. Now, I did mention they were selling it. Okay, so what does that mean? FIDOS for PC, it says free-ish. So I'm assuming if you're just installing like their base version, I don't know what free-ish means, but that's what it says. FIDOS for you, which is the version that I installed that is made specifically for my Surface Go 3, is $15 per year. Of course, they don't have dollars here. I'm assuming it's dollars as well. And that, again, is to get you that tailored experience for Microsoft, Surface, Raspberry Pi, things like that. So this may be more or less free for you to use. It may cost you $15 per year. And let me just tell you, before I even start showing you what this looks like on my Surface Go 3, the change in performance has been night and day. Now, yes, I reviewed that Surface Go 3 and I told you that it was, for most people, by and large, fine. But when you compare that speed to what I'm getting now with FIDOS, again, it is absolutely night and day. This thing is flying now, opening up Chrome, web pages, and relatively heavy Android apps in a snap. So let's take a look at that now. So I guess the first question that we need to ask is when you're doing this, when you're installing FIDOS onto a Surface Go 3, what works and what doesn't work? So let's talk about first what does work, and it's pretty much everything. Even our special keys down here to turn on the backlight of the keyboard, which there's a light over top of it, so you really probably can't see it. There you go, you can see it. Uh, the volume keys, the brightness keys, all of this stuff works out of the box. Even a stylus will work, which I'm attempting to use left-handed. I do need to power it up. Uogic pen, this is an off-brand pen um, because that's just the one that I have that was able to be quickly recharged. And it is obviously working just fine. You can even hold this and do like a right click with it as well. And you have your stylus options down here, which I guess I could show you. That's gonna launch Google Keep. And as you can see, there you go. We are functioning just fine. Everything's working. The only thing I would say that is a little bit weird is if you actually lock it by folding it up and then open it back up again, Sometimes your trackpad either won't work or multi-touch scrolling won't work. How do you fix that? Well, you just undock it and dock it back again, and it's working just fine. So what I've been doing to mitigate that, and it honestly totally fixes the problem. It's a slight inconvenience, but it does fix it. Instead of flipping up the uh, cover to lock it, just hit your power button and then do that. And when you come back out, it'll be fine. So let me show you how this works. It's basically Chrome OS, okay? Like it's not the most recent build of Chrome OS, but it's relatively recent. And again, yeah, it's just Chrome OS. You can see what this looks like. You can see I'm getting notifications from threads and different applications that are installed. You can see that my Chrome web browser does look a little bit different because instead of Chrome, it's Chromium. 
But other than that, you can see how quickly that thing actually launches the web browser. It is really, really fast. Let's launch the YouTube application. This is the Android app of YouTube. Again, you can see how quickly that launched that application. Let's jump into the drawer and let's do another app. Let's do let's do threads. I was just talking about it. Well, there you go. We're in a little floating window. Super, super quick. We'll jump back in and do a game like Minecraft. Why not? It's an Android app. It's going to load up and it's going to run pretty darn well on this thing. You can see we're loading in pretty fast. So I'm using my keyboard that's kind of not visible to you to be walking around and doing this stuff. But as you can see, it's running just fine. I guess I should point out one more interesting quirk. Up here, you, you probably know that on a Chromebook, those are not where your keys are. So what you can do to still access those is hold down your function key and then press a button. So you're gonna have to remember, you know, what key is your back button, your forward button, your, you know, you're gonna have to kind of just remember that stuff because obviously it, it doesn't say what it is, but, that was a little bit odd, but you do still have access to those keys if you want them. We can jump into our Chrome OS settings here and they look exactly as you would expect them to look. There's one thing that I do wanna point out to you, there is a subscription for FIDE OS. After 90 days, they want you to purchase a subscription. It is, I believe, $15 for a year of having FIDE OS. So that is annoying, right? If you're gonna keep using it in perpetuity, it's 15 bucks a year, but again, these days, $15 is a trip to Wendy's. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm honestly, I'm probably just gonna go for it and do it and just keep using this because it's really quite good. In terms of battery life, I'm at 40%. It says I've got an hour left, but it's going up and down. It's kind of been really inconsistent. Like I was at 45% and it said I had like three hours left. So it's trying to kind of still gauge my battery life. So I can't really speak to the battery life just yet. But so far, I think it's been pretty decent because I've actually used it quite a bit. And I think I was at about 80% whenever I installed it. So I think it's honestly gonna be about as good as it was on Windows, if not a little bit better. So another kind of quirk I wanna show you is if we go into the personalization screen, which does have material you theming, which is pretty cool. If we go to dark mode, everything does obviously switch over to dark mode. But one thing I've noticed is that some notifications when you're in a particular color may be difficult to read. Because of my material you theming, this looks okay to me right now, but sometimes it was a little bit hard to read. And then the other thing I wanna show you, if we jump back into YouTube, you'll see it is still in light mode. It does not actually switch to dark mode with that. So I've actually, because of the inconsistency, I've just been staying on light mode in general. I don't love it, but I'd rather it be consistent. Something else that we don't have is the phone hub. You'd expect to see that down there. That's the thing where you can connect your phone to this. If it's a Pixel phone, you can actually stream apps to the device. That is not in this build. Hopefully it does come later on down the line, but you know, kind of point out as well, this is always gonna be behind on Chrome OS updates because they have to take those updates and then turn it into their thing and then re-release it. Something else that's missing is the ability to do a floating window. So with newer builds, you're able to actually take an Android app and have it kind of docked down here and it is forced to always be on top. And that is a really, really useful feature that I wish was in here. Hopefully there's an update to FIDE OS in the not so distant future that does add that. And then the last issue I've seen is that every once in a while, I will go to open up an Android app and it will just sort of sit there and think about it for a long time and then open it. I feel like there's something that's happening in the background. Maybe the Android system that's running has basically crashed or hung or something that happens every once in a while. I think I've seen it twice so far since I've installed this, but as you can see, Generally speaking, man oh man, do these Android apps absolutely just fly. Let's open up something like HBO Max and you'll see here, it's gonna fire this thing up and load up that main screen just as fast as it would on like a proper Android tablet. And speaking of tablets, let's close this and let's close this and let's take off the keyboard. And what you will see here is that this thing actually will recognize that the keyboard is gone and it will switch into Chrome OS's tablet layout. So we'll open up our web browser again. And if we wanna go home, we're gonna swipe up to go home like that is an Android tablet. You can see the animations are not super duper smooth, right? A little bit of some framiness there, but it still is gonna work just fine. You can swipe up and hold and get into your recent apps. I mean, it basically turns into 
an Android tablet at that point, which is pretty cool as well, because again, it just works. For those of you that have a lower end Surface device like this, and maybe you use Discord, do me a favor, fire up Discord and tell me if it gets into your Discord servers as quickly as that. I bet it doesn't. I know for a fact it didn't on mine. And then when you connect the keyboard back, it should basically just intelligently switch you back to your proper desktop environment. So the installation process is actually pretty straightforward. Once you get your build downloaded, you may need to install something like WinRAR to unzip it because mine came in a compressed format. So you're going to have to right click it, use WinRAR or 7-zip, something like that to decompress it. And then in their own little guide here, they do point you towards this Etcher app. You could use that or you could use Rufus and you're going to be taking that disk image and putting it onto a flash drive, plug it into your device boot into that and you should be able to install it from there. Now for the Surface Go 3 or several Surface devices, that last bit will be slightly different. So I ended up using a USB-C hub because I don't have a USB-A port and all of my flash drives were of course USB-A. So I used a, a hub to do that. Bear in mind, you're gonna have to boot into your BIOS, which you're gonna do by shutting it down, holding down the volume up and then pressing power and you should boot into your BIOS. You can go into, I believe it's under security and you're gonna have to disable secure boot. There's an option in there that'll say something about only booting into Microsoft things. Turn that off. At that point, you should be able to go over to your boot order and put your USB thing up at the top, boot into it, and there's your installation. It was done installing in about three or four minutes. After that, I was going through my setup process, probably the entire process maybe 15 minutes, and I was running FidoS quite happily. And another cool thing is, even though it didn't have the Android stuff enabled at the beginning, you have to actually enable that, which is not difficult at all. Once I started installing my Android apps, it actually started putting them into my folders that existed on other Chromebooks. They didn't exist here, but once I installed that app, it said, oh, on his other device, that was in this folder. So it actually reorganized it for me which is fantastic. So guys, anytime I make videos like this or talk about products, people ask me, should I do this? Should I buy that? Is it worth it? And I always say, I'm not gonna answer that question because you are an individual. I'm not going to tell you what to do or what to buy. All I'm doing here is showing you how this works and that for me, it's been a pretty darn good experience. So if you have an older Surface device that is languishing away on your shelf, perhaps it has gotten to the point that it is just too slow to be all that useful, Take a look at something like this because it may actually be worth doing. And again, the cool thing is there is a 90 day trial with the 4U version and I believe the other version they say is free-ish. Again, I don't really know exactly what that means. So I say $15 a year or less is what you're going to be looking at. So free trial, you can always try it out. If you don't like it, you can reformat it and reinstall Windows or you know Linux or whatever else it is that you want to use. So guys, that's Fido OS. Pretty cool stuff. I'm excited to keep using it. I'm really kind of going all in on the Chrome OS stuff right now because I'm really enjoying where Chrome OS has gone and how it's now running on this newer, higher end hardware. Guys, thanks for watching. Links in the description to Fido OS so you can check this out yourself. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy. Everybody.